Hi, everyone. I'm really excited to be with uh, Justin Garrett Moore um, today and to hear more about his work. He, he is uh, one of our most well-known alumnus. He is incredibly engaged um, in New York and beyond. He's the executive director of the New York City Public Design Commission. He has a sort of pioneering uh, practice uh, called Urban Patch in Rwanda, uh, really focused on sustainable uh, building and issues of um, housing. He recently launched uh, the Dark Matter University and is incredibly active in um, supporting the next generation of Black architects and planners and people of color who really need to uh, kind of rethink um, what we do in the world and how we do it to be more creative, more sustainable, more, more equitable, and really, I think, one of the leading, leading figures. So we're very happy to have him also uh, as a member of our faculty, um, teaching for a very long time in the urban design program, and now uh, slowly kind of expanding to uh, to teach more specifically in the in the architecture program. So Justin, one of the most exciting uh, conversation I have, I mean, we've been talking a lot uh, in, in recent weeks and months, but, you know, you have a very strong sense of where practice needs to go uh, and how we can transform uh, practice for architects, for urban designers and planners. And I wanted, and you yourself, uh, you know, have kind of, you know, it, you're shaping a new, a new form of practice. So I wanted um, you know, I wanted to, to hear more about that. How, how do we construct not just alternate modes of practice, but bring them to the center and the, and the core of how we engage uh, cities and shape them today? Yes, thank, thank you, Amal. And, um, you know, I, I would say that my understanding of practice really did begin with uh, my time when I was a student uh, at GSAP. Uh, I had a kind of a wonderful kind of cross-disciplinary educational environment at GSAP because you have all of the different uh, departments, right? So you have in one school architecture, urban design, urban planning, even real estate, right? All the sort of the ingredients for how the world gets changed, uh, kind of our, how our built world happens, is really happening uh, uh, in GSAP. And so, uh, you know, my kind of inquiry into practice uh, started uh, re really young. Uh, and, and even including things like teaching and research uh, being integral uh, uh, to practice, right? That, that in a way we're, we're always kind of challenging and pushing ideas and questions and, and, and trying to sort of understand the world and, and our role and agency in that. And so, uh, you know, as you mentioned, I have sort of a, a, a kind of a multi-pronged uh, practice. I don't know if I'm a, a, a juggler or a multitasker or just have ADD or what, but, um, uh, you know, I, I've really enjoyed being able to work in different types of spaces. And something that I found is that design education, like at its kind of core, at its base, allows you to, to think and work within a, a lot of different modes of practice. Uh, and so I personally, professionally, have worked for a very long time in city government. Uh, and a lot of that, frankly, is motivated by personal uh, social interests uh, and, and being able to kind of serve and improve uh, places and, and society and economy uh, and, and all of those modes. And, uh, you know, the, the idea for how we understand our different skill sets, our different tools, uh, whether it's uh, great communications, right, that you learn through drawing and visualization, uh, how to process massive amounts of data <laughs> and, and to kind of reconcile it and, and process it, um, you know, challenges us to, to push practice. The final kind of piece that I'll, I'll say on, on on practices kind of a, a mode is that we have to think about agency and purpose. And so everything that we're all kind of collectively experiencing right now with uh, the, the pandemic, with uh, social unrest, with uh, kind of persistent ecological and, and climate uh, forces uh, that, that we have to reconcile and understand, we want to be able to, to do something, right? Like we don't want to just sort of have the world happen 
to us. We want to, to see how we can, can get better outcomes. And so, you know, the, all the different modes of working have to then uh, kind of come together and, and push yourself personally and professionally to, to go into other fields. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm considered a leader in the urban planning world, but my education is in architecture and urban design at GSAP, right? right. And I, you know, I, 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 you know, but I was exposed to planning at that time, right? And so there's this kind of constant learning that we have, and that's actually an ethical responsibility that we have as practitioners to learn and to be a part of a, a learning community. So I think it's, it's really interesting to hear you speak because I can see, uh, you know, how you've connected these different forms of practice and engagement and these different scales. And it's true. I actually think of you often as a planner uh, as well, which is amazing because the, you know, it's you one of the few who, who not few, but I, I think you're a model of what, you know, what we should aspire to in terms of creating these bridges. And, and 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 you're creating other bridges, right? You're uh, you you've kind of uh, this 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 past fall, um, you're holding a class that is a partnership between um, GSAP and Tuskegee University, and you shared with me that what's been fascinating is the question of place um, that is looked at, you know, from very different students, students who have a you know, uh, who come from China with students. And so I wanted to, to talk about the question of place and how it's both different specific and some of the forces are the same that we have to fight against. And, and then following on that, you know, just a hint of how you want to use your advanced studio six in the spring uh, in architecture to kind of expand even, you know, that, that idea of how do we, how do we in fact open up the school so that its mm -hmm. tentacles are more, you know, plugged in already in the world, even as we're still inside the kind of academic uh, sphere. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, so I've been teaching a course called Difference in Design. One of my kind of long time obsessions is the role that difference has in, in shaping places and shaping people, right? Kind of our, this sort of combination between built environment and, and ecology and then the kind of the social and, and, and economic and that, you know, unfortunately in most parts of the world, this is a global human problem, right? We have these inequalities that, that we're sort of constantly grappling with and, and that become present in place, right? So. Uh, places can be designed for inequality and injustice, but places can also be designed for, uh, you know, opportunity and, and care, right? And so how do we navigate that and talk about that um, directly is, is something that I've been personally interested in working in. And the difference in the design class is, is sort of a, a venue, kind of an opportunity that's been created in the school to, to have those conversations and for students to kind of learn together. And so, um, as you mentioned, uh, we were able to do something really exciting this year, kind of take the, the challenges of, of the pandemic and, and some of these social issues and create a, sort of a, a space for learning together uh, that brings students from GSAP and students from Tuskegee University, which is a historically black college uh, based in Alabama, so in, in, in the, the South. And so in this learning environment, we have the opportunity for the students different perspectives about place, like their own personal experiences and kind of what they know, right, to be kind of put together with what other people know, right, and to equally value and weight that uh, as we're exploring these questions as designers or urban designers or architects or, or even planners. Um, and so it's been a wonderful experience to see these exchanges. So someone from uh, you know, a, a black American uh, inner city community or rural South uh, community to be in conversation with someone, for example, from uh, China or uh, uh, the sort of the, the, the globe, what is often called the global South, right? And, and recognizing that there are so many things in common, actually, that, that brings so many of us into the built environment field, right? Our, our places matter, places shape us and we shape places right at, at a fundamental level. 
And so as we're doing that work to understand how do we get better outcomes for both people and planet, you know, it's important that we create these spaces of learning to, uh, to do that. And so um, I'm really excited that um, able to take this sort of groundwork that we've uh, created in this, this seminar and taking on big issues like uh, large scale urban redevelopment and displacement, uh, like kind of, uh, kind of climate based uh, disaster and, and all these issues that, that have radically transformed places and bringing that into uh, kind of the, the studio project framework uh, with, with the advanced studios. So I'm really looking forward to that conversation that we can bring this global conversation about uh, the power of place and the way that, that we as designers uh, enter that question and, and hopefully uh, toward more justice and, and environmental uh, sort of positive outcomes for people. So Justin, I'm very excited about the studio as well. And I, I, I do want you because you, you, you practice what you, what you speak about. And I wanted to hear more a little bit about uh, Urban Patch and your work in Rwanda. And, you know, cause you're, you're so, I think of you as so anchored in New York City, but actually you, you also are working uh, globally. So, I, you know, I mean, you are making those bridges as well. And so yeah. I wanted to, to hear about that and how you maintain the notion of place, even as you're working, uh, mm -hmm. Um, at a distance. Sure. Yeah. The, the first thing I would say is that, um, you know, Columbia is, is kind of rooted and grounded in, in New York City, obviously, and I've, I've kind of uh, grown my uh, career here. But the great thing about New York is that it is, it is global. It's national and global, right? Uh, and so you're able to always make great connections with uh, the, the great network uh, that's here uh, of people that do design and built uh, environment work. And because you're in New York, frankly, people then are interested in what you're doing. Uh, and, and so I've had the, the opportunity through my own practice, Urban Patch, to work uh, nationally in the U.S., but also internationally, uh, working in, in Kigali, which is the capital city of, of Rwanda. And uh, my, my work there has really used like every tool I have in my toolbox. I always <laughs> say I'm, I'm kind of a little bit of a Swiss Army knife of a, of a person, but, uh, you know, conversations that it had initially as an exchange between New York City government and mm -hmm. the, the city of Kigali government was how the, the, the interaction began with conversations around uh, planning, rezoning, redevelopment, and, and sharing uh, kind of policies that we've uh, done in the city as they were developing their plan. So uh, mm -hmm. the work there started really in kind of an, an advisory uh, capacity looking at the, the very big picture uh, questions. But of course, as you know, a designer and architect, like you're always interested in, you know, building. Uh, and, and so uh, while we were navigating what were considered to be policy questions around affordable housing development, for example, we actually needed to get to design, right? To how do you put the buildings together? What, what's the relationship between labor and material production, for example, in order to, to produce buildings in, in ways that are affordable for people, but also that uh, meet some of the, the kind of sustainability uh, and economic objectives. And so Urban Patch, we were able to, to begin work there where we're designing a building, uh, housing, affordable housing um, in, in the city and, and finding ways to do that that has really a lot of the lessons learned from the US uh, and, and other cities in mind for how to address things like economic inequality that is designed and built into housing pretty much everywhere, right? And so we're, we're doing the work of architecture and design, building design to figure out how do we get an equality of quality, right? Uh, uh, for people when we're doing things like affordable housing. And so we've, we've completed our first uh, building there. It's a eight unit development where I'm the urban planner, the urban designer, the architect, the developer, the secretary, the, <laughs> the everything, right? But really understanding the systems, right? That produce everything. And we're able to accomplish things like making sure that we're procuring materials from women-owned businesses, right? That, that we're looking at kind of a long-term uh, sort of uh, kind of environment of, of increasing density balanced with things like 
uh, providing for planting in open space. And so there are a lot of different equations that go into it that are all these kind of wonderful design questions that, that cross many scales. So it's very interesting, uh, you know, uh, architecture takes time, right? And, and often students are very anxious. They think that, you know, two years and it's done. They should, they should know everything or three years. And, and, and in fact, what you just described is not a linear path no. at, at very, uh, sort of a kind of a, a network of lines of inquiry uh, where your design thinking and and your kind of commitment, as you said, and sense of agency, um, uh, uh, it's sort of and suddenly now it's you know there it comes into focus and and you know because you kind of um, let yourself explore and not just decide as an architect here's my little box but rather right. how do i how do i learn yeah and 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 and, and so that i'm empowered and uh, i just think it's really um fantastic to hear you describe what in fact we hope our students aspire to is is to keep keep opening and at the end your total design <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah. right i don't have to com complain all the developers not doing let no. me do this like i am the developer so it's like control it but it's it's a really important point that you're raising and it's something that i actually learned when i was a student at, at gsap through the different courses so i did um, a joint uh, degree so i did both a master of architecture and a master of urban design which not a lot of people do but i really do encourage it um, the dual degree programs because, um, you know, when you get out in the professional world, you, you frankly want to be nimble and, and kind of um, multiple learning backgrounds is, is valuable. Um, but I, I would say uh, uh, Reinhold Martin's studios, um, uh, he would introduce this term called a pattern scene, mm -hmm. right? Like when you're looking for agency, it's, it's like, what's the kind of the points of constellation where, where there can be impact and the work that it, it takes to do that and the time that it takes to, to really be able to do that in a, in a way that, that is uh, not only empowering, but that uh, you can enjoy, right? Because mm -hmm. built environment fields have a lot of different things that people do. Like, I joke with people like I would, would like bang my head against the wall if I had to detail a curtain wall. Right? <laughs> Um, that's not the kind of designer that I am. There are some people that that is their thing. Um, and so it takes time to understand all of those kind of pieces and components that it takes to, to hopefully create a better world, right? It's, it's so many different ways that you can do that. And so it, it, it is kind of this process of, you know, kind of putting together the points and seeing the one that's, that, that you connect to. And, that's what grad school is great for doing to get, you know, kind of a lot of exposure to a lot of different ways of, of doing that. Amazing, Justin. Well, it's very inspiring to hear you uh, speak and I'm excited about having you at the school, but also um, just kind of hearing how things seem to be coming into focus as you're um, collecting all these parts and designing practice. And so I think for our students, you're really a model in terms of what's possible. Thank so you. Thank, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And hopefully the students will enjoy you um, soon as well. Great, great. And thank yeah. you, Justin. Yeah, thank you, Mo.